Hey developers, today I'm going to show you another code editor for your web browser, which is pretty awesome. This one's called Code Sandbox. And by the way, if you're watching this and you watched my last video, I did it on coder.com, which is an awesome cloud IDE. And by the way, right now you can sign up for it for free. You don't have to have any sort of alpha key or anything right now, so it's open to the public. So definitely check that out if you haven't already. So Code Sandbox is another code editor for the browser but I think it's a little bit better than um, some other code IDEs out there like CodePen and a few others. Definitely if you want more power, coder.com is the way to go because you actually have your own container and you can actually run npm install and everything like this. The sandbox gives you different options. So let me show it to you. So I'm logged in right now, but you certainly don't have to. You can either click on these boxes here, like this green one's for view, Blues for React, Vanilla JavaScript, Preact, or Angular. But what you do is basically is you click you click Create Sandbox, and you can check click it this way too. You can choose it this way. And when you click on it, it opens up a sandbox editor here. And you can see from the right hand side, you see this is like a template. You can see the components, and it has this browser here to the right and it gets updated in real time. So if I change this to welcome to uh, hello, you can see here it changed it right away. So it has real time changing um, live editing of the browser. It has this sort of uh, IDE on the left. It, it has some of the features you might expect like from Visual Studio Code like I can hit LI and it has Emmet built-in support for it. Uh, it it works really well. It also you can easily add dependencies. If you click Add Dependence here, the Add Dependency, I can just type in Moment. Obviously, it doesn't have every dependency. That would be if you're looking for something a little bit more customizable, like maybe like Coder.com would be better for that. But like I can install Moment. I just click on it and it forked it. Actually, what it did right now is it forked the sandbox for me, so now I'm no longer using the template. But if I go back up here, you can see here, here's my dependencies. Now I have Moment installed, so I could, I don't know, import Moment from Moment. You can see it's, it's, it's refreshing here as soon as I'm typing. And I don't know, I could do, let's say this was a date moment a uh, new date dot format and I can put in month month day day year 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 you see here it's automatically refreshing the right hand side so that that's really nice that that feature there you can certainly go right click and create file I can create another view component if I wanted to uh, so that's really cool I, I can actually connect this up to, I can save it while I'm inside the file here, but I also can go and uh, connect it to GitHub. So it has GitHub integration. So if I wanted to do that, I can connect it up. It has deployment integration with uh, Zite, if I want to do that. I haven't used Zite, but maybe that's a future video. You can configure your back package.json, your Babel RC. It actually has built-in Prettier support, which is awesome. If you don't know, that's a way you can do customizations and stylings. Or excuse me, it pretty pretty fies your code. So every time you save, it can put in if your length of the lines are too long, it'll shorten it. It'll do some of those nice things that'll help out with your linting. Uh, it also you can do go live and you can work with someone else at the same time. You can see here this URL. You could share it with somebody if you wanted to. I can just open it up, and it opens up, which is cool. So it has a lot of features here. Uh, I can obviously delete the sandbox, but if you just wanted to play around with a with a framework and you didn't want to install it, this is a great option. Here's the preferences. Uh, we can change the, it only has four different uh, font families, but if I wanted to change it, I could. And it, you can use font ligatures, which is on by default. So by font ligatures, ligatures, you can see here, let's see if it works. Like if I do the arrow function, you can see how it's connected in one in one thing, it's not like equal spine. It actually it's connected, so that's a that's a ligature. So it makes your code look a little bit nicer. It's dependent on the font, but you can turn it on and off. 
Oh, you can do Zen mode. You can turn on. I guess you, that makes gets rid of the um, editor at the top, and you can have different themes. So Night Owl, Adam Dark. So that's really neat. Uh, you can use your own theme from Visual Code directly. So Visual Studio Code is pretty much the standard now from web developers. Everybody's using it. So it looks like you can use your own custom theme. You can do Prettier on Save, which is awesome. You can turn that off and on. I'm a huge Vim fan and has Vim support, so that's a plus one for me. So I turned it on so I can quickly move through the files. You can set your Prettier settings, uh, your width, tab width, semicolons, trailing commas. That's really neat. If you're using React with JSX brackets, you can turn that on. You can do Preview on Edit, so you kind of have, have that hot reloading. You can change your key bindings. You can do integrations with Zite or GitHub, like we were talking before. And I guess there's no experiments, but they will be in the future. And if I go to my dashboard here, you can see here is the view template that I created a little earlier. This is the one I just created right now, view template. So you can see you can create all these different sandboxes. And you can even integrate them with Git if you wanted to, which is nice. And this is all absolutely free, so it has a lot of features. It uh, looks like uh, I can do new sandbox, like React. I know one thing, if you're using CodePen, if you're using JSX, uh, it doesn't quite work as well, I've heard. Uh, so this is great that you can just create your Sam React app real quickly through here. You, this has all the dependencies built in. You can even add more dependencies if you wanted to. So this kind of looks the same as the view one. You can fork it, you can share it, you can actually click here and download it as a zip file and just run it locally. Uh, one other feature I like is you can explore examples too. So you can kind of see like the most popular templates is create React app, which makes sense. React is probably the most popular. But you can see Vue is getting Vue is second place. I'm um, obviously it's a fourth, but people are still using Vue tons. Vue is just gaining so much popularity. That's awesome that it's the second most used template. And then Parcel is pretty popular, so you can use uh, the stuff with Parcel. And Angular CLI, I haven't touched the Angular CLI, but I know. So you can, look, there's a ton of different demos. So I could choose one, like here's just the basic Angular demo. And it downloads the dependencies for you. It already has the animations, common, compiler, forms, HTTP. It has RxJS, of course, and lead that. So, you know, one thing with with Angular, it's a little bit, has a lot more files. It's, I think it's a little bit more complicated for beginners to start off with, especially if you're not used to TypeScript. But uh, it's cool that they have this all up and running for you, so you can just kind of get up and running quickly. So here's your app component, here's your TypeScript file, and your HTML. So let's see, out of the TypeScript file. Now I don't know how much I'm, I'm guessing TypeScript supports just built in as you would expect it to be. Let's see here. Oops. Let's do like implements ng on init. Actually, on init. Init. And if I save it, looks like it uh, doesn't give me any errors. So I'm sure it does if I do just random stuff here and save it. it. Doesn't know what it is. So maybe it's not quite as good of type checking as you would expect, but ng on init console log hello. I wonder if you can run the console log on here. Let's see here. Yeah, you can say, all right, so it's working. It, it did the console log to hello on the ng on init. So that's good. Um, you can say blah is a string. And then blah equals hello world. And then e has own properties, not a function. So blah is not defined. So we do this dot blah. So you don't have to automatically save it. Yeah, so this looks pretty cool. You can definitely do a lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, so I just wanted to just quickly show you guys that. If you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And by the way, if you like these 
videos, please click that subscribe button, like it, and uh, I also have some of my favorite view and React and Angular courses below. Check those links out, click on them. Uh, if you buy anything from them, I get a few bucks, so check out some of the awesome courses from Udemy. Just use my links below. Thanks.